Okay, wait, wait, wait. Ah. There is some issue. Yeah. Okay. okay. First okay. thing is like data collection papers. Data okay. collection. So, yes. so first we collect data and do pre-processing. Okay. So data collection, we need to gather relevant data from various sources. Then second step is to data cleaning. We need to handle missing values. We need to see the outliers. Outliers, you know, you will learn in the when we go and learn statistical. So outlier is that whatever is not coming. Suppose I'll give you an example. There are numbers like 10, 20, 30, 40. So there is a number which is a data a number which is 500 or 1000. So uh, in your main numbers, there are like you have data, suppose you have 10 data sets. So 10 data sets are 10, 20, 30, 40, and then you have 1000, 2000. So that 1000, 2000 will be an outlier because it is not lying within that ma'am the maximum number of data what you are having the mean of it so if it is going outside that uh, the the central tendency so that would be, that would be called as outlier it can be minus it can be plus so it can be in both ways so that is what is outlier and inconsistencies so you have to uh, understand those things so what is outlier what is inconsistency what is the missing value so that you have to uh, do all those processing there pre-processing okay and feature engineering is transforming that raw data into a meaningful feature in earlier sessions we have explained that raw data is raw data it is like a uh, like um, uh, soil like you are getting soil but you have to do a lot of processing on that soil to create a pot so you have to make it you have to put water you have to do a lot of processing on it and then you have to make that uh, keep for days together there and you have to do a lot of hard work a lot of uh, work on that the pre-processing and then you build a pot or you make a plate or you make anything out of it similarly you, you when you get data you have to do feature engineering on it transforming raw data into meaningful features okay so that's what it is the third step and then you have fourth step which is data integration so you have to combine data from multiple sources okay so so you you have to confirm you have to see the consistency if one source is saying something some day so, so you have to classify also because then you need to see uh, the consistency in the data that's also important when you do data integration uh, combining it from different sources and then uh, you have to get a right model out of it yeah yeah raj yeah so on top of it like as we are mentioning you know in the previous session it's like uh, the data collection is going to be a very important thing for anything their data should be very consistent and it should be from a legitimate source like those things so where um like starting from data collection data cleaning feature engineering this everything consider uh, as we are discussing about an application no medical application where we are having the uh, respiratory uh, problem where i'm they are collecting the sound data so in the sound data it's not going to be sound itself there will be some noises in the sound there will be some background noise as you guys i think you guys are feeling that there is some fan noise from from ourselves from our side right so when we record this data when we process this data the processing step is very important we need to remove the background so that only we can get a clarity of voice and then only we can able to create a model when i'm not doing any pre-processing i'm creating a model what happens means the model can also detect in the same manner only it will detect the like it will make an error like the person doesn't have a respiratory problem but it says the person has a respiratory problem due to the unprocessed data okay so that's that's a major thing like data collection and pre-processing is is a i i say model building is simple this data collection and pre-processing if we do properly then it is very easy as we as we know no when we study for uh, till the base stage like 10th then our base is ready now everything we can build on top of it 
like that only it is like a till 10 standard i will say yeah if you so, make everything ready and everything is ready yeah go it sir go so ahead. so the 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 thing is like garbage in garbage out there is a concept in computer science so whatever even if you so you eat healthy food your body will be healthy and then you your performance whatever work you are doing will be healthy you will have a greater output similarly if you are not having a processed pre-processed data clean data your model whatever model you are creating as raj has mentioned that the model will not be healthy okay it won't be uh, that efficient and then once your model is not good then whatever problem you are solving you will not solve that problem um, with efficient and uh, with accuracy whatever problem you are solving whatever product you are building whatever service you are doing whatever you are doing you are building application or you are running an organization whatever decision you are making you will make errors and then the outcome will be wrong so you have to be very careful not for pre-processing for all these steps should be managed very carefully because they are there because they are needed otherwise they won't be on this slide every step is very very critical to build a efficient model yeah so as sir is mentioning like the data is not going to be like 100 200 300 in real time it will be like millions plus consider if data is million plus how much kind of pre-processing we need uh, consider how we can store how we can retrieve how we gonna index it so, so we I should be an it. example yeah good sir. yeah chat gpt was built on billions of data sets so they what they did is they collected data they clean data, they did feature engineering, they did data integrations, and they, then they they have different models for that. Okay, reinforcement learning, there are different, different models they apply. And then the major problem comes because you if you have to build a greater platform like Chat GPT, you have to have billion plus data sets. You have to train the model on that and you need a huge computation uh, and it's it's and it has a cost to it as raj also said that he asked for uh, gpus so uh, it, because it costed much for the organization that is why because computational computation costs you much right now once we have quantum computers in future so we'll maybe we'll lower down the cost but right now there's only huge cost is which is computation for those data sets and building model on huge data set that is the major thing you will as a data scientist you will get to know in future sessions you will know that how these things are working so uh, each and every model which is created that has these features that has to go step by step and build model an efficient model and optimize model and you can see gpt uh, when it came and then gpt 2 3 whatever all the phases so it uh, they kept improving improving and uh, optimizing iterating and optimizing it and improving the model actually they perfected the model and model started learning that's what is machine learning so yeah that is what is the uniqueness in ml is that uh, once you build a model it starts learning himself uh, itself based on the data but the the model which you have created on a core data that matters a lot because your model will start behaving the way garbage in garbage out so you put questions to gpt or other different like you have different um, gpts now there microsoft has different different uh, google has gemini and all so you will see you you give one prompt you will see the the outcomes different because they have different models and they have trained differently yeah as you are mentioning i think the guys are like they become enthusiastic when you are saying chat gpt because everyone in this world is using chat gpt it, it, it is becoming like 
every day they are using for every application they are using for us also we are using no so like yeah as mentioning the data is going to be that much important like i i i'm not sure i'm just uh, saying a random number like chat gpt is trying till like uh, 2023 i think so september i think it's death chat so consider this much data it has go to the chat gpt and ask when the uh, india won the last world cup it is going to tell the answer in a proper manner guys you just go and ask how it is done it is the way the data collection and how they how they would have processed the data consider they going to collect the data from different article different websites different books scanned documents pdf everything and they are just combining everything and getting the data in a mom form that they can apply to the gpt model okay so they have built a like they have built a dragon kind of thing this chat gpt like a dragon right. it is like a mystery so consider how how much they have worked on this data collection pre process yes so that, if you see guys chat gpt is nothing but this process data collection <laughs> data cleaning feature engineering data integration data processing and building models using different models but you and me cannot build that big company in future we will but yeah. um, right now you know what is the problem computation compute even open ai was a uh, non profit organization but then they changed their constitution and they got funding from microsoft because microsoft has servers and they can uh, they can get use their infrastructure for compute they compute is a big big uh, i'll say it is a liability but that is the only thing if you if you have that you you are going to build any kind of platform but process for all kind of machine learning ai ml or any application whether it is nlp computer vision this is very very crucial guys you have to understand these steps properly deeply and you have to understand and apply these things in your data life cycle in data science if you do that you can build any kind of model you can understand any model you just need to know the concepts and application of it coding and all those things that is a very small thing this is the major part of any ai ml and deep learning this is the major major foundation strong foundation if you want to build in ai ml this is the thing this you have to understand properly yeah i think when we are going for the coding session right sir they going to understand like <laughs> what the data is going to do <laughs> there yeah. will be lots of missing values duplicate values column mismatch column name mismatch <laughs> and sometimes and there will you be have to apply things. different things you will get hundreds of errors yeah you get frustrated you will have lows you will have highs you will have a, and you know one day i was building a model so i got uh, there was a hackathon global hackathon so i built a model and uh, the highest uh, guy who had the highest accuracy i was at that point of time i was at third position uh, two out of 200 people so we built model so i got uh, 96.5 and the highest was 96.55 only 0.5 and you know i got one model uh, which i trained it was 96.7 okay 7 okay zero so um, but you know what happened i didn't consider that and uh, i lost that like um, i i did again i did some uh, iteration and i lost that score and uh, i came sixth uh, okay. out of 200 people because of that one thing like it's 0.5 uh, percent and then you come to that level so that is that is very important so i did around 50 iterations for that model so i'll not sleep for uh, like till 2 am so that kind of so it's it's like uh, you get craving and you when you are all into it so you understand the meaning of even 1% um, improvement in your model and that is 
and your model will be exactly whatever you have done in four steps then and only you will be able to build model or i would say all five steps and then you will be able to build an efficient model but for that you need to have small small meta understanding about how data science works so that you can build those models yeah so that's the thing whenever you get an error come to these steps and change the steps <laughs> whatever like anything related to data cleaning feature engineering anything you change here the model will change automatically the accuracy yes. will come so, so it's like you tuning know. you do tuning here tuning of data pro, uh, data pre processing data integration feature engineering some if, if, any model uh, rightly said by raj any model will have a problem here any model whether it is you worlds all models i'll say if there is any problem that is problem in these five steps so uh, any issues in your future models anywhere you have to consider deeply these steps so that you build efficient models let's go to the other step yeah sure sir sure. yeah so the next step is exploratory data analysis now you have a clear data okay now you need to have a understanding from the data so by using data profiling where we will be examining what is the structure what is the quality of data we are having by understanding it and then the visualization guys this is going to be the huge impact for us so whenever you have a data when we learn everything like uh, like we complete the data science we know whenever the data is thrown onto us through excel we can understand what is the data but consider we need to explain to the client how a client can understand how uh, what is the language that they can understand when they doesn't know anything about data what is the language they can understand only to visuals so data visualization is going to be a great concept through which you can make the understanding of data to the client so finally that will be something called as hypothesis testing so like how the data is generated whether it is distributed translation like a standard deviation like those things so from this i will say only data data visualization is going to be huge impact yes sir over to you yeah so we have to understand these uh, steps data profiling we have to examine the structure quality structures characteristics of data to understand the strengths weaknesses and potential issues hypothesis testing formulate the testing hypothesis about the data generate insights identify areas for further investigation so you have to do all these steps properly so that you first you do data profiling then visualization then hypothesis testing so these are the steps for exploratory data analysis so that you build efficient models yeah so yeah we can move on to the next slide yeah okay yeah model building and evaluation so as we we are ready with our data we have a pre processed data ready next we need to choose the model like consider where we are having apple and mango okay so here i need to create a model in order to find which is a apple which is a mango this time we need to go for a model called as classification we gonna classify use a model which can classify this thing and consider this problem statement we gonna predict the house price based on its features like how many bedrooms are there what is an area so what how many like uh, like uh, what to say how many floors are there based on this we need to gonna predict the house price here the classification problem will not work we need to find a regression model so like this we need to select the model which is appropriate for our data once we select the model we will go for the training so we need to train in a manner that it gives the proper and better accuracy and we should not underfit and overfit guys don't worry about this technical term you guys going to learn about it finally we need to evaluate the model unless and until we get a proper output that we are expecting yes sir over to you yeah so we have to when when we are doing model building and evaluation first let us focus on model building with data preparation we have to do all those steps cleaning transform uh, and feature engineering model selection we need to choose appropriate model machine learning model okay then you have to model tuning we have to tune it okay and uh, use the 
prepare data or whatever we have to tune it so that we get be better predictions and better performance then model evaluation assess the model performance using various methods you have to do a lot of iteration at evaluation and then you will have better results yeah so that's the thing like model building and evaluation just don't think about it like it a it like a vast concept or like a dry concept it will be right very now, interesting like, right now let us go broad breadth for search let's understand everything and then we go into depth once we apply yeah. you will understand yeah i think uh, i will say a secret it will be only two lines of code <laughs> when you yes, go for the coding yes. it will be just yes. two lines <laughs> yeah so we'll go for the next thing yeah deployment and monitoring so we have a model we have a data we train the model we get a output like consider a problem we're going to uh find a person is having heart disease or not and we get the data from the healthcare we pre process it we build the model and we are ready with everything okay now we need to give this to the client who give our problem statement okay how we can give this we cannot deliver them the pre process data we cannot deliver them the model but because the client needs from us they will feed the data they going to find whether the person has a heart disease or not so you should be in a manner that you can project the data to the client that they can understand so you need some kind of user interface so before that you need to deploy your model and you should be ready with your user interface right so what you need to do means once you have trained your model you need to deploy in a form that it takes the input from the user and it need to give the the problem statement result when it is a, a like heart disease prediction the user comes and he will throw the inputs like this is a cholesterol range this is a sugar level range this is a blood range and this is the number of times the person falls sick that's it our model should predict the person has a heart disease or not that that's it you should not explain like you should not have the steps like pre processing there and then model building and then evaluation like those things you should not have just deploy it and you need to have a interface and it should be available for the client and one more thing once you deploy and given to the client you should be periodically monitoring it because um the i will say uh, the data is going to change as it goes the way okay we should have a periodical monitoring and then if there is some change and our model is not working properly then we need to retrain our model based on the new data so that's what all about this deployment and monitoring yeah go ahead sir yeah. so when you are deploying a model first you have to understand the that you have to see performance and accuracy before that so once you get good accuracy if it is not you have to do a lot of iterations and build model uh, you need to use different algorithms and different methods to get the best and whatever you are doing you are doing according to the problem statement the objective function what you are going to solve you don't need to think uh, above or below than the scope of the problem statement you have to always whether you are collecting data or you are applying models or deploying models or training models whatever you are doing you have to get the best performance and accuracy according to the problem statement your problem statement should be very well defined defined and approved by the clients or who stakeholders and whatever you are doing it should be the within the scope of the problem statement and then based on that if you are able to solve that problem with this model that you have achieved the result and you are successful yeah, and you so have to do the continuous improvements and keep improving the model so we can go for the next step like yeah, yeah. we have completed the steps whichever we are having for data science now we going to see something like what will be the future of data science so i will not say future it is present the variations is occurring now i think the ai is going to ruled out in a manner that it can replace the human right it is happening in the present we are having ai in every manner like uh, we are having robotic arms and some operations are done by uh, robots in the medical fields so yeah the things that we are having is a little bit like increased ai integration like every field has an integrity of uh, integration of ai then advancement in big data consider we like 
every day we are creating a data in some form like now we are just talking and we are creating a video data we are having a recording we are having video data now so we're going to stream it so that will be streaming data also so in every domain there is a creation of data which leads to big data then there is a work for us as a data science scientist we are having work whenever there is a data whenever whenever there is the data we are having a work finally uh, we need to emphasize on ethics as we mentioned previously like in the start of the video like uh, in our first session we need to have some ethics because the data is very sensitive if you, if consider if you leak your phone number how much damage to it now i'm going to mention something different some different information if it is a bank account number together with the password what happens and you are giving it to chat gpt and training it consider so like these are the ethics we need to safeguard our data as much as possible so yeah, yeah. these are the future so these are the very important things we need to uh, increase ai integrations will happen data science will become very very important it is for ai uh, for future whether it is quantum computing ml deep learning anything data is fuel it's new oil okay uh, so oil was uh, if you see oil why we are saying oil because oil was driving the economy of the world now data is going to drive the economy of the world so that is why data science is very very crucial very very important and then advancement in data science a, a big data like huge data is generated every day and um, the ethics should be always considered uh, from right source and use of privacy understanding um, the uh, legal issues legal concerns and cyber security all those things are very very important you, sh you should not use that data for harming anybody or creating any um, bad for anyone so those ethics should be in place to whatever application project or any model you are building you have to consider these ethical considerations so that uh, you are always safe and others are also safe yeah, absolutely that's the thing so thank you so yeah, much everyone it. it was great session i enjoyed araj also enjoyed and you will definitely enjoy and write us in the comment section so how is your experience till now and uh, we are going to learn this end to end ai ml including data science stat all the things which touch ai ml so you will be learning here. It will be in the playlist. Thank you so much. Uh, and with practical, with practical yes. approach. With yes. practical approach. Yes. Yeah. With practical theory, practical concepts, examples, our experience, everything will be mixed, and it will be in um, a mix of uh, rich experience, rich education, rich skills, and so that you understand each and everything simply with simplicity, and you learn it and you go and apply uh, in your projects and build great models and solve big problems of the world thank you so much yeah thank you everyone thank you for everything like i have we have enjoyed and let us connect for the next session thank you yeah, thank you thanks. thank you thanks, thanks.